So mitosis will occur, for example, when uh, a tissue has been wounded. As a result of a wound, mitosis will occur. New cells will be generated to facilitate the process of wound healing. So mitosis occurs in healing. And when people are little and grow bigger, one of the things that happens is that more cells are produced to make them grow bigger. Sometimes the cells grow, but very often, more commonly really, that the cells divide to make the organism grow bigger. So primarily mitosis occurs during growth and repair. But mitosis is going on all the time in most tissues of the body. Most tissues of the body. Now in, uh, people, in older people, uh, mitosis does not occur in muscle cells and nerve cells. But in most other tissues of the body, mitosis is going on all of the time. It's an ongoing process. It's part of normal maintenance. So three circumstances where mitosis occurs. Growth, repair, maintenance. Growth, repair, maintenance. That is when mitosis occurs. Conservation cell division, the number of chromosomes being conserved. Now, the other form of cell division we'll go on to look at now, it is meiosis. And meiosis only occurs in one circumstance, and that is the formation of sex cells, the formation of gametes, sperm cells or egg cells. They're both formed in the gonads of the parent as a result of, or by or through the process rather, of meiosis. And in this case, the parent cell contains 46 chromosomes. But when it divides, the daughter cells no longer contain 46 chromosomes, they now contain 23 chromosomes. So the number of chromosomes has been reduced from 46 in the parent cell, in the germ cell, whether it's in the ovary or the testis. And it was reduced to 23 chromosomes in the gamete cell, which is either the sperm or the egg cell. So this process is meiosis. And because the number of chromosomes have been reduced, it's referred to as reduction division. So meiosis is reduction division. So what we can now look at in basic terms is the process of fertilization. A sperm will contain 23 chromosomes. And the ovum, the egg cell, will contain 23 chromosomes. And this gives us a cell which now contains 46 chromosomes again. So 23 from the father, 23 from the mother, gives us a cell which contains 46 chromosomes again. This fertilized egg cell is referred to as the zygote. So at one time, you were once a single cell, just one cell, that is what you were. sperm cell produced by meiosis, fertilized an egg cell produced by meiosis to give us a zygote, a fertilized cell. And now, what happened next was this cell divides into two. To give two cells, each containing 46 chromosomes, So the number of chromosomes is conserved, 
Therefore, this type of division clearly is mitosis. And then these two cells divided again. Now you ended up with four cells each with 46 chromosomes. Then each of these divided again. And so on. Eight cells with 46 chromosomes, 16, 32, 64. Until you were formed. So the growth of the baby in the uterus takes place as a result of mitosis. Now just before we leave this topic, I'm going to go on and just explain briefly how twins arise. This is quite an appropriate place to put it in. So let's look at uh, twins briefly, and then we'll go and look, look at cells in more anatomical and physiological detail. So twins... There's two sorts. The first are referred to as monozygotic. Monozygotic. Look at the word mono means one. Zygotic refers to the zygote. So in the case of monozygotic twins, the zygote divided into two, and normally those two cells should stay together and then divide into four. To form one cohesive body. But in the case of monozygotic twins, at one zygote divided like this, and the two cells separated, physically separated in space. And then instead of forming one body, they went on to form two. So each then carried on mitotically dividing. to produce two separate bodies. So the first sort of twins, monozygotic from a single zygote. Second sort of twins are called dizygotic twins. In dizygotic twins, there are two zygotes, as the term indicates. And in this case, the two twins originated from two zygotes because two eggs were fertilized by two separate sperms. So there was always two zygotes in this case. So one sperm fertilizes this egg, another sperm fertilizes this egg, and then, of course, they go on dividing by the process of mitosis, dividing mitotically to produce the two separate organisms. So monozygotic twins share all of the same genetic information, therefore are always of the same sex, therefore are always identical. Dizygotic twins, though, come from different zygotes and uh, different sperm.